Welcome back, everybody, to the Tennessee Titans franchise here on Madden 23. Today, we will be kicking off the postseason with the divisional round. Our Titans have wrapped up the regular season with a record of 14-2-1, which is good enough for the best record in the NFL and the number one overall seed in the AFC. Overall, I feel like it was a really successful season for us, and I'm happy I was able to get through it quickly. I didn't know if I was going to be able to do four games an episode, but we were able to get it done going 4-1 and one in the last episode with some really close games. As you take a look at the final standings across the rest of the NFL, taking a look at the playoff picture in both conferences, the Bengals, Titans, Bills, and Chiefs win their divisions in the NFC. We've got the Lions, Panthers, Cowboys, and Cardinals with your wild card teams being the Colts, Patriots, and Browns in the AFC. And then in the NFC, we've got the Bucks, the Commanders, and the Los Angeles Rams. We'll do a very quick season recap since I didn't do it in the last episode, since last episode was like an hour long. So we're going to briefly look at some of the stats and whatnot and our award winners and sort of reflect on how our guys did in the regular season and what we can expect in the postseason. The strength of our team was definitely our offense. We had arguably the best offense in the league, led by second-year quarterback Romeo Colocci, who had a great season. He started off a little bit slowly with the new playbook, but then he got acclimated, and as we got closer to the middle of the season, he really started to look comfortable, and he was able to get his passer rating higher than it was last season, throwing for over 4,700 yards, 41 touchdowns, and 12 interceptions. Derrick Henry, in his 11th NFL season, looks like he's running like he's 21 years old, and Elijah Bryant was great too. Scotty Pickens and Garrett Wilson was a very fun duo. Pickens led the team in receiving despite missing nearly four games. And if you look at Pickens' numbers through each of his first four seasons, he's been super consistent with exactly 10 touchdowns in each of those four years. Although, again, keep in mind he missed some games this year, so his numbers would have been better. Kyle Pitts was pretty good when healthy. Elijah Bryant was a major asset in the receiving game. The offensive line was pretty good. The defense was very up and down. We had some good games and some bad games. The pass rush in particular was rather inconsistent. And then, of course, Cardell Simpson. Oh, my goodness. What a season from him. 12 interceptions pretty much out of nowhere. He has been unbelievable, particularly over the second half of the year. I mean, look at all the interceptions over the last six or seven games. He only had three picks going into week 11, which is when he had the game-winning pick six against Dallas. He's had nine since then. And the craziest part about his season is that these are not the most amount of interceptions that Simpson has gotten in his football career. As a junior at South Alabama, he had 13 interceptions. And then as a senior, he had seven. So this guy knows how to find the football. One of the main reasons why he was so good is because QBs did not pick on Caleb Farley. They only threw it towards Simpson, and it backfired. Also, interestingly, we had zero forced fumbles. I don't know how that happens, but we did not force a single one. Now let's take a quick look at the awards and where our players ended up finishing. Romeo Colocci was sixth for the MVP. Head coach Zebediah Phoenix ended up finishing in second for the coach of the year. Cardell Simpson won the Defensive Player of the Year. Very well deserved. He was the best defensive player in football. Romeo, third for best QB. Derrick Henry, seventh for best running back. Sebastian Cross, fourth for best OL, even though he wasn't a starter. While Nate Davis finished in 10th. Josh Sweat finishes in 10th for best defensive lineman. Cardell Simpson in first for DB. And Daniel Carlson, third for best kicker. Let's take a look at the matchups here in the first round of the playoffs, which we will not be participating in, as our team, of course, has earned a first round bye. We will face off against the lowest winner amongst the AFC teams. If it's the Browns, we would play them. Then priority goes to New England. Then the winner of the Bills and Colts game. So it'll be one of those four teams that we face off against. Shall we find out? Welcome, everybody, to the divisional round of the 2026 NFL playoffs. The Tennessee Titans will be facing off against, drumroll please, their division rivals, the Indianapolis Colts. Indy beat the Buffalo Bills in the first round of the playoffs, and they will face off against the Titans here in the second round with an AFC Championship spot on the line. We know these Colts very well. We play against them twice a year. They finally got over the hump this year, grabbing the five seed, going 11-6. and six. As we take a look at the scores around the league through the wild card round, we had some really close games. The Colts matchup in particular, they beat the Bills 42-39 to in a thriller. The Chiefs, meanwhile, will play against the Bills. And then in the NFC, the Panthers will play against the Rams. And the Lions will play against the Commanders. Interestingly, the opposite seeds won in both conferences. 
two, three, and five in the AFC, and then four, six, and seven in the NFC. That's kind of odd, but alrighty. So as we take a look at what to expect with this Colts team, we played against them just two weeks ago in week 18 in Indianapolis, and we've been battling with them for the division for much of the year. While we were in control of the division pretty much all year, the Colts did not make things easy. We played against them in week five, winning 52 to 17, absolutely dominating. Then week 18 was a lot closer. We ended up winning that game 38 to 34. We had already clinched the one seed, but we still played our starters in this game. And it ended up being a really exciting matchup. And I think today's game is going to be a lot more like that week 18 game as opposed to the week five matchup. The Colts have a pretty talented team led by third-year quarterback Bartholomew Blunt. It took a little while for Blunt to really get going in his NFL career, but here in his third year, he has really turned into a good player. And our division with Blunt, Romeo Colocci, and Trevor Lawrence has some really talented young quarterbacks, and I guess Kane Sanders too, but he's not really as good. He did not play well against us in Week 5, although he was really good in the Week 18 matchup, and we've got our hands full with him today, and we've also got our hands full with Jonathan Taylor, who led the NFL in rushing this year. He is an unbelievably talented back. I will say, we were able to stop him in Week 18. He did not have a very good game, but that doesn't mean I'm not nervous to see how he performs today. The Colts have a pretty solid group of weapons at wide receiver. They're led by Debo Samuel, the reigning Super Bowl MVP, Michael Pittman, TK Thomas, former Titan Jonu Smith at tight end. They've got a great offensive line and a really talented defense with good players at all three levels of that side of the ball. So this is going to be a challenging game. It's really hard to beat teams twice in one year, which you only get with your divisional opponents, and it's even harder to beat them three times in one year. The Colts are coming off a crazy win against the Bills. Josh Allen did play really well, the NFL MVP. He did outperform Bartholomew Blunt a little bit, but Jonathan Taylor ran absolutely nuclear, helping the Colts get the win on the road in Buffalo. And we would have played against the Bills had they won, a team who we had just lost to two weeks ago, back in Week 17. So as we take a look at the strategy for us on what we need to do to win this game defensively, we've got to stop the run. Jonathan Taylor is really, really good. I think he's the second best running back in the NFL because I'm biased and I want to say Derrick Henry is first. And then on the other side of the ball, we need to run it well too, but we also need to throw the ball well. Romeo Colochi has been a good playoff performer in college, but we haven't really seen it from him in the NFL. In his first two playoff games as a rookie last year, he was pretty unimpressive. These are two very talented young teams with quarterbacks who have made the college football playoff multiple seasons. These you two young quarterbacks may not have a ton of NFL playoff experience, but they've been in big-time games in college, and they've gotten a couple opportunities each in the NFL. The Titans will start with the ball. Kolochi is going to be sacked on second and nine by Quiddy Pay. I feel like Quiddy Pay kind of owns the Titans. I don't know why. He performs really well against us. Third down and 19 now. Romeo looks to throw it. Backs up in the pocket under pressure from Pay. It's incomplete. So Indianapolis gets the stop, and they will get the ball for their opening possession of the game. Third and five. Blunt looks to throw it. Launches a rocket downfield, and it's intercepted! Cardell Simpson strikes again! More like Cardell Hempson. 12 interceptions in the regular season. Now he gets one here on the opening drive of the playoffs. This guy is unbelievable. He pretty much rips the ball out of Debo Samuel's hands. These QBs will never learn not to test him. And I get throwing it to Caleb Farley is not a good idea, but throwing it towards Cardell Simpson is equally as stupid. The Titans are backed up inside the 10, though, after the turnover is on third down and three. Kolochi with a dime downfield. What a throw, but it's out of bounds. And so the Colts get a very lucky break, and they'll start with great field position here. Pass the 50. Blunt has a wide open man. It's Debo Samuel. Pushed out of bounds by Byard at the 22. Good play there for the Colts. It's almost as if the interception didn't happen with the fuel position. Now a big play. Third and six from the 18. Blunt's under some pressure, and he will be sacked. Harold Landry and Ed Oliver are in the backfield with half a sack each. The pass rush has to perform today. There have been too many games where the pass rush for the Titans has been silent, and they've got really good pass rushers. Landry, Oliver, Josh Sweat, Aziz Ojolari. Francis Bola Kamoa, all really good players. The Colts kick the field goal there on the board first here in the first quarter as it's 3-0. Third and 12, short throw for Garrett Wilson, hoping he can make a play after the catch, and he does. Great move for Garrett Wilson, who gets the first down. 
Romeo finally completes his first pass. It's been nearly six minutes of game time. The Titans are finally starting to move the ball down the field. Their offense has done nothing before this as Kolochi lobs it up for Hot Rod Pryor who brings it to the 23. Now in the red zone, third and seven. Kolochi is an open man. It's Elijah Bryant. He is in for a touchdown. Bryant scored the game-winning touchdown a couple of weeks ago in Tennessee's last game against the Colts. And here, fittingly, in the playoffs against the Colts, Bryant scores the first touchdown of the game, and it's 7-3. I feel like every Titans game in the first quarter, it ends 7-3. Nice play by R.J. Robinson on the first down handoff, but unfortunately, Harold Landry is hurt on the play. That is not good news. Harold Landry is such a key piece in this defense. He's a good regular season player, but Landry's a great postseason player as Jonathan Taylor gets the first down on the wheel route. The Harold Landry diagnosis is in. He strained his pec. He should be able to return soon. Thank the Lord. That would have been really bad. The Titans need Harold Landry. Again, he is such a difference maker, particularly in the postseason. Just seconds to go in the quarter. It's a screen for Taylor, and he loses five. Asher Gonzalez reads the play like a book. And that'll wrap up the first quarter. Your score seven 7-3. It has been a defensive battle so far. These two defenses both look really, really good up to this point. We'll see if either offense can look to break through here in the second quarter. When these two teams played against each other two weeks ago, both offenses were phenomenal. Now it's been the total opposite. On third down, TK Thomas is wide open to the 37. The Michigan Wolverine connection of Bartholomew Blunt and TK Thomas connects for a gain of around 20. Second down and eight. Blunt up the middle, another first down throw. It's in the hands of the tight end, Raphael Cunningham. Third and six now, around seven minutes left in the half. Blunt has Jonathan Taylor open. He will bring it to around the six. So now the Colts are finally moving it well down the field. Blunt has not made a lot of big throws, but he has been efficient. 10 of 12. On second and goal, it's a handoff to Jalen Phillips, the young running back out of the University of Iowa. He is in for the touchdown, and the Indianapolis Colts will take the lead with their first touchdown of the game. It's now 10-7. Third and six. The pass for Pryor is incomplete. Indianapolis gets the stop, and the fans appear to be pretty pissed off about it. So here is Jeffrey Walker, the young punter, on to kick this one away. The punt returner is going to let this one bounce, and it's going to be a great punt with a really nice roll down to the three by Chidobe Awuzie. What a punt by Walker. So the Colts are going to have it with bad field position, looking to get out of this mess. Blunt in the red zone, backhanded throw. It's caught by Michael Pittman. Now the Colts are out of safety territory as they have it at the 21. And now they have some wiggle room and some flexibility to try to move the ball down the field. Third and five, short throw up the middle, caught by Thomas, who's hit hard by Kevin Byard, but he does get the first down, and Indianapolis appears to be really moving the ball again. Second and five now, Blunt on the run. He's going to look to keep it himself. He's got some speed as he has hit hard, but gets it to the 44 for a gain of around 14. Blunt was a great runner as a quarterback at the University of Michigan, and he's really developed as a pass rusher now in the NFL. Here's Jonathan Taylor, breaks off a big run. He is gone. I don't know why he went slower there. 44-yard score for Jonathan Taylor, and the Indianapolis Colts extend their lead. It's now 17-7. to So now the Titans really got a score here before the halftime. Keep in mind, Tennessee does not start with the ball going into halftime as Elijah Bryant gets the first down. Second and five, Tennessee still with all three timeouts. Here's Scotty Piggins, open, and he will drag the feet in bounds at the 42. The Titans are in field goal range now. I'm sure they'd like a little bit more than that. Second and three, passes caught by Scotty Piggins. He'll get it to the 27. The clock is ticking, 41 seconds left now. Tennessee with only one timeout now as it's incomplete, but we do have a flag. The Titans are going to get gifted a defensive pass interference call as it goes against the Colts, specifically Julian Blackman. And now Tennessee has it in the red zone at the 16. On first down, Kolochi up the middle for Hot Ron Pryor. He is in for a score, and we are within one possession. It's nighttime. It's time to go to bed. Everybody's singing their lullabies for the sleeping Titans in the end zone. Now they're awake, and it's 17-14. Good drive, good throw to finish things off for the touchdown. And the Titans are right back in the game, only down by three. The Colts are going to have time for one more play here in the first half. I assume they're going to look downfield, and they will not. I don't know why. 
For what it's worth, Blunt, Taylor, and Debo Samuel are all in the zone, and they will start the second half in the zone. So the Colts do have that going for them, along with the lead. 17-14, your score. It's been a tight battle so far. I think both offenses are starting to get more comfortable as this game has gone along. As we take a look at our halftime report, the winner of this game will face off against the Kansas City Chiefs in the AFC Championship. They beat the Cincinnati Bengals in the divisional round, so either the Chiefs will travel here to Tennessee or they will host Indianapolis. The Titans have played against the Chiefs two years in a row in the playoffs, losing in Season 3, then winning last year, both games, of course, in the divisional round in Kansas City. But if they were to play against each other this year, it would be here. I don't want to worry about Kansas City too much, though. Right now, we've got to focus on beating the Colts. We're down, and we don't start with the ball in the second half. So we've really got some work to do here as we take a look at what we need to do in the second half. We have not ran the ball well at all here, and while our run game was really good this year, we have really struggled early in games to run the ball over the last four or five weeks. I'm not really sure why that is. However, since we are losing, I feel like we need to focus on throwing the ball. Romeo colochi has been solid. He's had some good throws, but he hasn't been great, I would say, so far. So I really want to focus on the pass game. And then defensively, Jonathan Taylor has been really good for the Colts so far, but again, I want to stop the passing game. Because with this being a close game, I wouldn't be surprised if both teams are continuing to throw the ball in the fourth quarter. Here at the 37-yard line on first down, Jonathan Taylor mauling through defenders. I mean, that's what happens when he is in the zone. He'll gain around 12. For any other running back, that's a gain of probably around 2. And off to Taylor here on first down to the outside. Breaks a tackle, tripping forward. He will not be tackled. That might be the greatest gain of 4 I have ever seen. Second and six now from the opposing 47. Blunt looks to throw it. He's under pressure. Connects with Jonathan Taylor short for another first down. Busy start to the third quarter here for Taylor. Second and seven from the 35. Blunt up the middle. Connects with Raphael Cunningham who gets a few. Debo Samuel hurt on the play though for Indianapolis. That could end up being a big deal for them. Of course, their number one target. Another guy with a lot of playoff success as we know. He was the Super Bowl MVP last year. He knows how to make big plays in big games. Samuel limping to the locker room. We'll see if he returns. He is questionable. Third and three. Handoff for Jonathan Taylor. He will get the first down. Gets by a defender. The Titans cannot seem to stop Jonathan Taylor after they had him supposedly figured out in the Week 18 matchup. The Colts in the red zone from the 16. Second and five. Blunt up the middle. Gets it to Michael Pittman Jr. Who gets it to the one. The Colts are inching closer and closer to the red zone. We'll see if the Titans' red zone defense can potentially make a stand and keep it a one-score game. Handoff to Taylor on first down. He is met by three defenders in the backfield, losing three. Kevin Byard finishes him off. And Jonathan Taylor is now out of the zone. Second and goal from the four. It's a toss to the outside for Taylor. Breaks a tackle, but he's going to lose four more. The red zone defense making some plays early. Josh Sweat. And friends are the ones to bring him down. And now it is a third and goal from the eight. Huge play here for both sides. Maybe the biggest play of the game so far as Blunt looks to throw it under some pressure. Goes short and it is caught at the three. So the Titans appear to have gotten the stop. It's a Wouzier with the tackle. But the Colts are going to go for it on fourth and goal. They weren't successful on their first three tries as it's going to be a pass. Blunt looks to throw it. His pass is broken up in the secondary by Kevin Byard. The Titans get the goal line stand, and it'll remain a three-point game. They're backed up inside their own 10, but they'll get out of it quickly. Here's Pitts with a huge play, tackled from behind. If that guy does not grab him by the heel of his shoe, Kyle Pitts might have taken that all the way. Still a huge first down for the Titans. Under a minute left in the third. Romeo is intercepted, and the fun comes to a screeching halt. Julian Blackman picks it off. Romeo was waiting for Kyle Pitts to get open, but he threw the ball too soon. That was a boneheaded mistake there by Kolochi. Still 17-14. is on second and three. Taylor is smothered in the backfield by Asher Gonzalez, who's had a really nice day for the Titans on defense, and that'll wrap up the third. No score change. Nobody scored. <laughs> In that third quarter, it's still 17-14. I was saying how both offenses were really finding a groove after the first half. Maybe not so much. Third and three. First play of the first quarter. The Colts with it at the 30. 
Here is Blunt. His pass is tipped away by Chidobe Awuzie. So it's incomplete. Colts punt it. Titans get it back. And they can tie or take the lead on second and three. Scotty Pickens breaks a tackle. But he ran behind the first down marker. He could have easily gotten the first down. Instead, he's trying too much for the big play. Third and one. Handoff for Henry. He'll get it anyway. So it's not a huge deal as he gets five. And Zaire Savage, the third, the young defensive tackle for the Colts, is hurt on the play. Second and ten. Tough throw into the hands of Scotty Piggins, who gets it to the 31-yard line. That was a risky pass, but it does work out. Now from the 31, just over six and a half to play here in the fourth quarter. Colochi under a little bit of pressure, goes up the middle for Garrett Wilson, and he gets it to round the 16. Wilson's been a little quiet today. I'd love to see him and Scotty make some big plays here down the stretch. As the Titans have it in the red zone with a great opportunity to potentially take the lead. Colochi on first down is sacked. Taekwon Lewis, the young pass rusher out of the Ohio State University, brings him down. Third and five now from the 11. Colts looking to keep the Titans out of the red zone, but Elijah Bryant is open. Touchdown, Titans! Elijah Bryant with his second receiving touchdown of the game, and the Tennessee Titans take the lead with under five minutes to go as it's 21-17. Bryant has scored twice here today. This one, a big one. So the Titans have taken the lead. Good drive by Romeo in the offense. Those are the first points for either team here in the second half. And now we'll see if the Colts can respond. Good play on third and goal. Good play design. The Colts were not ready to have Bryant over towards the right side of the end zone because they had nobody in that area. Bartholomew Blunt remains in the zone while Devo Samuel remains out of the game. Here's Michael Pittman with a gain of 11 for a first down. Following play, four and a half minutes to go in the ball game. The Titans lead it by four. It's a handoff up the middle for Jonathan Taylor. Flag on the play as he gets around four or five. Ever since the Colts brought it into the goal line on their first drive in the second half, they have forgotten how to run the ball. The Titans' run defense has been really good. And they get called for the hold on Quentin Nelson. And it is now a first and 18 for Indianapolis. Blunt has an open man downfield. It's 2-2 Atwell, who's hit hard at the 44 by Jaquan Brisker. Still a huge play for 2-2 Atwell, who gets the first down. 2-2 Atwell is looking to step up here with Debo out of the game. Under four minutes to go, short pass is incomplete out of bounds, and Quentin Nelson is now hurt on the play for the Colts. It looks like he's grabbing at what appears to be his shoulder area. Second and 10. From the 44, 3.48 left to go. Titans lead it 21-17 here in the AFC Divisional Round. Bartholomew Blunt looks to throw it up the middle. Broken up by Caleb Farley. And so now it is a third and 10 for the Colts. Again, one of the biggest plays of the game so far. If the Titans can get a stop, that'd be huge. And the Colts could have a tough decision looming. Blunt under pressure. His pass is somehow caught. But Atwell does not get much. Quickly wrapped up by Cardell Simpson after a gain of two. So on 4th and 8 at the 42, the Colts are going to kick. I don't like this call at all, as the kick is unsurprisingly no good from 59 yards out. If you really want to score, just go for it. A 59-yard field goal is no easy feat, and even if he had made the kick, the Colts still would have been losing. So that's why I really don't like the call, and now the Titans are going to look to choose some clock. They haven't really ran the ball well today, as Henry only gains around 2. Second down and 6 for Tennessee. And off for King Henry once again, trying to stumble forward, and he will gain around three more. That'll bring us to the two-minute warning. Can the Tennessee Titans finish it off? They appear to be in control, up by four with the ball, but they've got a huge third and three. We'll see if the Colts can get the stop here. Is it's a handoff for Derrick Henry once more? Does he get it? They're going to give it to him. It is a first down, and Indianapolis will start to use their timeouts. Following play, thrown the 41 onto Elijah Bryant this time in the backfield. Bryant with a hole up the middle. He gains around 12, and the Colts call timeout number two. The Titans are pretty much one first down away from finishing off the job and advancing back to the AFC Championship, and they're going to get it right here. Wide open room for Derrick Henry. He will get it, and this game is over. One more kneel down here for Romeo Colochi, and that, my friends, is the dagger. The Tennessee Titans win a tough, physical, hard-nosed defensive battle, 21-17. Only seven points were scored in the entirety of the second half from both teams, 
Certainly a big difference from the first times these two teams played against each other. The Titans scored a combined total of 90 points in the two regular season meetings against the Colts, but their offense really did not find much of the groove today, and it did not matter because the defense was so steady. So the Titans are going to the AFC Championship for a second straight year. Last year, we lost in the heartbreaking fashion. The Jaguars this year will face off against Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. The Colts got more yards than us across the board, but it didn't really matter as we were able to get the job done. Romeo Colucci was good. I wouldn't say he was great, but he was pretty good. He avoided mistakes other than the interception by Julian Blackman. Bartholomew Blunt also, I would say, was good, but not great. We did not run the ball all that well up until the end. As for the Colts, they ran the ball very well for the first two and a half quarters, but then our run defense really keyed in, and we were able to stop Jonathan Taylor for the most part. Overall, none of the receivers really stood out. It was really all about the defenses. It's not like we had some great pass rush from either side, but the run defenses were good. The secondaries were good. Both teams were very strong in coverage, but ultimately we played just well enough to move on and keep our season alive. And we've got the Kansas City Chiefs waiting for us here in the AFC Championship. As we take a look at the NFC scores, the Panthers barely get past the Los Angeles Rams, and then the Washington Commanders upset the Lions at Ford Field. So the Panthers will face off against the Commanders in the NFC Championship, while, of course, we will face off against the Chiefs. Players of the Week, Clyde Williamson, Gaston Miller Jr., Udo Afolabe, those three guys' teams all lost, and then Romeo Colucci. In case you're curious about the wild card Players of the Week, we've got Isaiah Gordon, Mac Jones, Montez Sweat, and Tremaine Edmonds. Let's take a look at these Kansas City Chiefs. They're obviously a really good squad. We're very familiar with them. We've played against them two years in a row in the playoffs. They eliminated us in Season 3. We eliminated them last year. So this is kind of like the rubber match. We'll see which team can really take control. The Chiefs have been consistently the second to third best team in the AFC this year, although they have been slumping a little bit. They did lose their final two regular season games, although obviously they've won two playoff games, beating the Browns and the Bengals. Two pretty close matchups at home. Now we'll see how they can do on the road. The Chiefs on paper might be the best team in the NFL. Obviously, they are led by Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey. Justin Jefferson, Chris Jones. They've got so much talent on both sides of the ball, so many weapons on offense, so many young studs on defense. We've got our hands full, but we beat these guys last year at their place. Who's to say we don't do it again with a Super Bowl appearance on the line? Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Peace out. Tighten up.